Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays. Today we're going to continue our series in global load balancing algorithms and we're going to talk about topology today. And so what topology allows you to do, it kind of gives you full control over the decision process for DNS requests. And so if we draw the world, we've got North America, South America, for some reason in there is Antarctica, uh, Antarctica. I think. Um, I don't know a whole lot of IP traffic that comes there, maybe from the science bases that are there. Uh, maybe the penguins are hanging out and getting on the internet. Um, we have Africa, and then we have Europe, and then we have Asia, and then we actually have another one in there, uh, Oceania. And I did not know that was a continent, but that's how it's defined, and uh, I thought it was just Australia was the continent, but Oceania. And that's uh, New Zealand and uh, Australian and uh, some of the other uh, countries in and around that area. And so basically you have these regions available if, for example, you want to uh, break these into chunks. It gives you the ability to say, I want all the, all the traffic here and maybe all the traffic here and then maybe all the traffic here and then there's this big other one, unknown. And so it's going to use the, uh, the IP database when you get a request in and on topology. And based on our IP intelligence, it's going to know that the, your traffic is in one of these continents. And so an example I'll use here, now that we kind of know our regions, and maybe we'll say that we'll go ahead and, and group unknown in with this, this central region. So, if I'm going to build out a topology database for my requests, then I can build what's called regions. And so one region I'll say is Asia Pacific. And another region is the Americas. And then another region is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So we have EMEA. And so basically we, we, we grouped all of those continents into these three regions. And so now that I um, know what my regions are, I can create topology records based on those regions. And that gives me the ability to say I have data centers um, in multiple uh, places. Say I have one data center in that APAC region and I have a data center here in the Americas, and likely I have m multiple in each, in each area, um, but uh, for the sake of the example, we'll keep it small. And say I have a data center in Europe. And so, based upon the topology of, of uh, the requests coming in, if I have a request from Asia Pacific, I want that traffic to go to Asia Pacific. I want it to keep it in region. And if it's coming to America, I want it to go to America. And of course, if it's coming to Europe, I want it to go to Europe. So if, um, and that's all well and good. However, if for whatever reason this is down, where else am I gonna send it? And that's where you can create multiple topology records to say that if I have traffic from APAC, send it to APAC primarily. And let's say I put a weight on that when I create my record of 100. If, for whatever reason, that's not available, I want it to go to the Americas and maybe set that at 50. And that way, the weight's going to carry all of that traffic to APAC unless, um, unless that, uh, that record isn't available at that time, and then it'll go ahead and select the Americas. And then, of course, for the Americas, you can do something similar. Say, for Americas, I want primarily, um, I want all the traffic from the Americas to come to the Americas region. And then uh, if it's not available, I want to send that to Europe. And then vice versa for Europe, I want, I want it to go to the Europe region. But if it's coming from Europe and that's not available, I want it to come to the Americas region. And so at the wide IP level, that, that's how it's doing, kind of as John was explaining, um, that's done at the pool level. So I'm sending it to the APAC pool, I'm sending it to the Americas pool, and I'm sending it to the Europe pool. And uh, within the pool, there's going to be one, or possibly many more 
uh, virtual servers from your local traffic managers in each of these pools. And so that is a different load balancing decision, and we'll get to that in, in future uh, videos. Another example uh, of uh, topology load balancing comes down um, to a solution that, that I was involved with at a, a former, um, uh, my former employer. And we actually used the GTM as the uh, source of authority or the start of authority for our clients. And we had a data center filled with hundreds of servers uh, that all of our 60 some odd thousand clients uh, came into for, um, uh, for uh, remote desktop sessions. And we had amongst those, I mean, between those two data centers, uh, I think, I don't remember the numbers, but we had roughly two to one as far as the virtual servers in one data center versus the other. So we had about, let's just say, uh, 15 in one data in DC1 and then uh, eight in DC2. And so what we did from a, a topology standpoint is we, we broke in these pools into uh, pool one and pool two uh, of all these different virtual servers. And then from a, uh, a DNS perspective for uh, all the thin clients, or all the, yeah, all the thin clients out there, we had uh, IP source was um, what we used um, for our topology. So if they were uh, in the 10.10, and these are just bogus numbers, but if they were in the 10.10, let's just say 10.10 because uh, we had a lot more than that, but if they were in the 10.10 region, they would go to pool one, and if they were in the, uh, let's say 10.11 region, they went to pool two. And then within the pool level, they used a different load balancing algorithm, but it allowed us to segment by source IP uh, the, um, where our thin clients went. And the reason we made GTM authoritative for the clients was uh, because we only had like three or four LDNS servers in the environment and uh, distributing four clients to GTM didn't quite meet the, uh, the requirements for what we were trying to do for the client itself. And so we made GTM authoritative and based upon the topology of our IP scheme within the, the grander network, allowed us to route everything appropriately and get traffic distributed to the data centers in a way that didn't overwhelm our servers. And then at the pool level, we used a different load balancing algorithm altogether. But so as far as the topology record itself, when you're creating it, you have multiple options to, uh, to select uh, as your source. So you have source traffic, and, and that can be, as we were doing, um, well, actually, we set what's called a region as our source. And then as our destination, we selected a pool. But there are other options. You can, you can just skip creating the regions, and you can create multiple topology records based on each continent. You can do it on country. You can even do it down to the state level. And uh, uh, some of the, you can do it ISP. Most of the ISPs in there are China. Uh, they do have uh, a couple other ones that are not uh, specifically located in China. But uh, five, I'm missing one. What am I missing? Uh, oh, IP subnet, yeah. So you can do it by IP subnet. And then of course you can do it by all six of those and then pool and data center as well. So all six of these also work as a destination, but you can do pool and uh, data center as well. And so that's your source and destination. And then of course you set an operator and these are simple, it's either is or is not. And then, um, and then you set your weight. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Whiteboard Wednesdays and we'll see you next time as we get into the pool level load balancing algorithms for GTM.